Right, uh, it's 9.30 and we got two papers, Victor. Nice, well done, thanks for preparing. Uh, welcome to New Latino. Um, this is a weekly uh, journal club online, open to everyone, welcome to come and bring a paper, quickly present it, tell us why you're excited about it. And then we have a chat about the paper. Um, Right, should we just should we just make a start? Any any preference? Any one of you wants to go first? Oh, I, I can hear the volunteers screaming. Uh, Victor. <laughs> like, ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me share my screen. So this was a paper that was uh, kindly pointed to me by uh, Steffi. Uh, because I did not have a paper, <laughs> uh, but I should have, because I did not have one last week. Anyway, so it's uh, an interesting paper about the um, the statics, statistics, at least a, a starting guide about uh, test retest statistics uh, used in fMRI, and a bit of a presentation about what is the state of test retest uh, in uh, fMRI studies and how to, to use uh, these kind of tests and uh, why, it's, why there is a problems and why uh, it should be improved. So first, uh, barely had the time to, <laughs> to go through it. Um, it was, it's interesting because it's more. Uh, it, it gives. It starts by giving a broad um, presentation about the statistics, uh, the, the the real the statistics behind the uh, this kind of test, uh, with uh, the introduction explaining that the most uh, used model is uh, what is called. Uh, ICC for intraclass correlation coefficient. It is a kind of um, correlation coefficient. Well, it's, it's in the name. It's like a, a correlation uh, that is uh, taking into account the variability between uh, subject and intrasubject to, uh, to try to uh, model this kind of um, well, variability and to take it into account in the, uh, the test that you are running uh, and to uh, just try to see the, um, uh, what was the terms, because they, they used very specific terms, the consistency and the, uh, the validity of uh, your, uh, your tests and to, to uh, and to quantify it. So there are the, the, the most used test uh, is uh, the commonly, uh, the ICC commonly denoted with uh, uh, two uh, different um, letters, well, uh, variable N and K uh, that are variables that are, that are used to set of the model because it's obviously a, you use a statistic model to, uh, to determine the, um, uh, the, the, the type of, um, of statistics you want to run. It depends on what kind of data you have, what kind of, uh, uh, of test you want to run. And so there are, for the end, there is three uh, that are possible. Uh, if you use uh, the one, it's for when you have uh, what they call an absolute agreement, uh, and it's when you do not uh, take into account any uh, um, source of error in your test. You just say they have to be the same. Well, we, we assume that they are all the same and they should be the same, well, uh, at least uh, within subject. Um, the ICC2 uh, with uh, n equal 2 uh, is when you add an, uh, a random effect inside. So this is the most 
broad one that you can run that are that that is one, the most uh, conservative, I'd say. Um, and there is the ITCC with n equal to three is when you have multiple uh, fixed and uh, potentially known uh, source of error. And so what they say a bit later is that when you're not really sure about what you're doing, well, at least not what you are supposed to use, uh, so the, it's better to use the ICC2 because uh, it's, uh, it's more, um, it's more conservative. Uh, but then there is also the number the, the number K that you can you have to, to run. It's it's uh, the uh, if I understood correctly re related to the number of observation you have. Uh, so I guess the number of retests you have on the subject. I'm not completely sure because uh, to be honest, it's uh, I wanted. I went through it quite quickly, and the part that are more spe uh, specific to the statistics. Uh, I think it's a good introduction, but you need to have a bit more background to fully take it in. Um, um, it's really it, it's linked to a lot of different other papers. So, yeah, it's it's a good start. I think if you want to to get to to it, but it's a uh, quite short for when you want to, when you have absolutely no uh, prior knowledge uh, on this uh, thing, like I did. <laughs> and but I, I think it should be, when, when you do this kind of statistics, you have to start somewhere and it's a, it's a good paper to start with. Um, and and th so, yeah, the, um, they also give like the, uh, the rule of thumb historical values that you can have with the FCC, uh, with the ICC. Like uh, if it's under four, there is a poor, um, uh, it, it's a poor value. It's between uh, 0.4 and 0.6. It's okay, uh, 0.6 and 0.74, it's good. And above uh, 0.75, it's, uh, it's excellent. So yeah, it's always good to have, to, to, uh, to have this kind of value because when you start, you don't know exactly what you're supposed to have. And yeah, that's, that's great. So then they go on with uh, a few uh, a few recommendation. Well, uh, if, a few things to consider when you start to run an ICC. I won't go too much into details because the it's the the article is a lot like a list of different things to take into account and uh, to to be aware of. Uh, so it's uh, it, it would be a bit tedious to to run you through all of it, but I, I quite encourage you to to read it if you are doing test pretest analysis. Um, so yeah, the the last part is more about the um, where we are with the um, more specifically the fMRI studies and the different. Um, reliability, reliability uh, and uh, of uh, test retest studies. Uh, well, this and the, they are uh, listing once again here, for example, on these multiple paragraphs, what are the, uh, the studies that have the best and the worst kind of reliability with these test retests. For example, here they say it's better, well, the one with uh, on task, activi uh, task activation studies, block is better than event-related designs, uh, target, non-target better than uh, task uh, rest contrasts, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, that's, well, <laughs> the, I, it's hard for me to, to summarize everything. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll end up by just saying that it's not a long read, but it is the uh, it's the start of a long one if you want to uh, fully understand the the topic. And I really encourage you if you're using this to uh, 
to start by this one, it's uh, I think it's it's a great introduction to uh, to the, to the field. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> um, any questions? Okay, Michelle. All right. Yeah. Thank you for this. It's very interesting. Do you think is there like any any code that like uh, allow us to do this uh, intra-class correlation coefficient and um, that is available, or do we have to code it ourselves? Uh, I did not see it, but I'm sure there are libraries uh, that are available online. Uh, Python libraries, pretty much, or well. R libraries, I'm almost sure, but I don't use much R. Uh, Python, there are more and more statistic libraries available. Mm -hmm. So I assume there are, but I've not seen uh, the presentation of uh, anything in this article about the- uh, Okay, yeah. uh, question number two is for your paper. Actually, I, actually, in bioarchive, we use cross correlation. Do you think with intra class cross correlation, we would have shown a higher reproducibility of fMRI? Um, I'm not sure. The thing is, uh, the, um, uh, the cross correlation usually gives uh, is a uh, gives a, bet, a better value because it, it does not take into account, as they say, the, uh, uh, the, the scaling of some effects. For example, uh, it's, uh, it does not change uh, if there is a linear uh, relationship between a measurement of, and another. Uh, but this kind of uh, tests will change if uh, there is a linear relationship it will not change if they are um, a translational relationship. So basically, it will uh, um, correlation will change will not change if you have a relationship relationship. Uh, for example, a x plus y, but this one uh, it will only it will change for this, but will not change if it's a relationship x plus y. Uh, I don't know if I'm clear, but it's. Uh, so I see, so yeah. which one would you recommend? Uh, well, if we have to be honest and have a, a good, uh, something that is recognized as a, the test that is supposed to be done with test retest, we should use this kind of uh, statistics. But uh, I'm not completely, um, well, I just discovered it, so I'm not completely okay. sure about uh, everything about it. Thank you. Leah. Okay. No, um, thank you, Victor, for the paper. And um, when you were saying that there was like a parameter that um, can uh, take into account like uh, some noise factor, if I didn't understand mm -hmm. too yes. well, I was thinking, uh, um, so this, this kind of approach should be used only for test retest within the same scanner, the same sequence, or is also something that we can use like uh, between this to compare different sequences or is beyond the scope. Yeah. Like well, if we can find a, like a correlate uh, to see like if, how much they differ, is, can we use this also for that or no? Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, they are speak. They they talk about uh, the uh, different scanner, different sites, uh, uh, okay. and this kind of thing. Um, I don't remember exactly what they were telling about. Okay, so it's possible. I was yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, think it's it was a, something that I was thinking, it, or uh... no, no. It's it's interesting. They also say that uh, it's they, there is a whole paragraph, well, uh, a small a small paragraph about uh, this. The thing and the, also the okay. uh, harmonization between scanners and stuff, and they send to other references yeah. uh, to to say, okay, if you want to do this, do that. Uh, check this uh, this paper. So it's good because they send they, they talk about a lot of different things, and but just briefly and link to the paper that you can go on to uh, to more to investigate more about it. 
Ah, okay. So um, I will have a look because it's, uh, it's really interesting that you have an instrument to compare uh, the similarity or the agreement. Uh, yeah. Between or, or also in the fMRI that you have like a lot of uh, noise factors related to the sequence and everything that can be different. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you both. Any more questions? No. Um, I have a quick question for you, Victor, and I appreciate that you read the paper briefly, but you mentioned that um, block design um, studies are better than event-related uh, designs. Is that in terms of reliability or is that a general rule from this paper? Oh, no, it's, uh, uh, well, let's just look at what they say. It shows that it say that reliability has been shown to improve for block rather than event related designs. That's uh, exactly what they say. It's they they don't go uh, further. It's so uh, just one of the list of things that they say. Uh, okay, you have to be careful about uh, these kind of things, and uh, if you want to improve uh, this and that, uh, we have we there are papers saying that, and here. They just say uh, uh, that reliability has been shown greater for blog design rather than event related, and that's it. There's not much more about it. I mean, they, they, they're linked to the article, so we can still go for, uh, and see further uh, about it, but yeah. Yeah, our fMRI expert, so <laughs> I'll let you dig into it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right, if there's no further questions, we move on to the next paper. Leah, if you want to share your screen. So um, this is the paper. Uh, again, I am, <laughs> I am curious about these uh, visual hallucinations uh, process uh, in our brain. And uh, there was this paper published in Cortex uh, last week uh, by Timothy Lohan and Dominic Seat. And uh, so I was curious, uh, and uh, I um, I read about that. And um, in this uh, this time, uh, we are focusing um, in uh, Parkinson's disease and uh, uh, the Charles Bonnet syndrome. So, like um, as um, we have seen also in the paper I presented last week, uh, um, hallucinations uh, uh, can be present, especially in, in uh, the narrow degeneration uh, disease. And uh, in the Charles Bonnet syndrome is uh, a clinical state when you have, uh, uh, in, um, it, it's nicely described uh, in this paper, in the introduction, when you have a uh, high impairment, uh, they say here, related to, um, like in the visual pathway, um, it can be related to uh, different uh, um, Causes also, like for example, after a stroke or here uh, in the study, um, the patients have um, age related uh, macular degeneration, uh, so um, an eye disease uh, related to these um, retinal part degenerations, and uh, as a consequence of these uh, impairment in your visual pathways, you can have hallucinations. In fact, uh, here, uh, when they uh, sum up the hypothesis uh, that, uh, and they previously investigated the uh, studies on this field, they say that uh, uh, somehow, if you have a different, differentiation, I can pronounce that, of the visual, uh, um, like in the path and the connection uh, to the visual cortex, the cortex can be more uh, like uh, hyper um, excitated, and so you can have you can have these visions that uh, are not uh, actually there, and uh, usually these visions are uh, like simple visions, uh, so dots, uh, colors, shapes, um, and uh, so this is typical of the Charles Bonnet syndrome. Uh, on the contrary, like uh, in the Parkinson disease, uh, you have more uh, like. Uh, uh, a shape uh, uh, passing in the background in the, your visual periphery, uh, a, a feeling of a presence, uh, um, tactile and auditory experience. So these are typical of the uh, Parkinson's disease and uh, so different uh, features, uh, even if uh, they can have in common also like uh, uh, 
uh, complex hallucinations where you can uh, see people, animal objects. It's really nice here in the paper that they actually um, reported all the hallucinations that the patients had to uh, give you like an idea of the variety as also Michelle was asking last week uh, that uh, can be like really like different. Uh, here you have uh, for each patient like a huge table where you can really have the feeling of these, uh, the, of the content of the hallucination. And uh, they can be like how is they can be related to house, animals, uh, um, swimmering glass, the colors, uh, sometimes the walls or words on the stream, and the lights of print, uh, um, white ores. Uh, they can be like uh, there is like a huge variety. Uh, caterpillars, sex, uh, chicken is something that was in a different. Uh, uh, patients, cats, um, these are the Chardonnay one, or in the Parkinsonian, you can have also faces, figures, uh, uh, beers, uh, head, um, again, uh, people, animals, faces, cats, so uh, both uh, animal uh, uh, people or uh, like objects uh, related to houses. Um, and uh, in the case of the Parkinson disease, uh, the hypothesis uh, behind uh, the hallucination uh, manifestation is related to like a dysfunctional integration between the uh, attentional network, uh, the, in particular the dorsal one, and the uh, visual uh, perception. So like uh, a kind of um, dysfunctional integration, like uh, of attention and uh, visual uh, input. Um, and uh, the uh, novelty of this paper is uh, that they focused their uh, MRI investigation on the cerebellum uh, because uh, there was also another study uh, related to schizophrenia where they um, found uh, significant differences uh, in the cerebellum uh, in uh, patients uh, uh, who were like um, reported uh, um, pharmacos uh, uh, resistant uh, hallucinations, uh, so they were like consistent in time, and they found significant differences in the cerebellum. In particular, uh, using the in this paper, they also used the uh, sweet uh, voxel-based morphometry that is uh, an STM tool uh, focused on uh, um, the uh, cerebellum. So you mask the cerebellum and then uh, you do the uh, comparison voxel-based using uh, uh, T1 images um, on the gray matter and the white matter. And uh, this approach is designed to be uh, really uh, precise in the location and they're in source in the registrations uh, between uh, uh, su subject in a study group. And uh, you can also like investigate uh, and correct manually the, um, uh, the mask that they're using. So you can overcome some issues related to uh, the, so this the segmentation. So uh, this tool is really uh, designed to have the most precise possible classification and comparison between the patients' uh, subjects um, in the cerebellum. And then they um, compared. So, um, so in this uh, the study group was, uh, uh, it's, um, it's not really, it's a sizable group, 21 patients. Uh, in which um, 16 were uh, Parkinson's disease. And so you have this group of about 20 patients then is divided in Parkinson's disease and the Charlesbonne syndrome. And then you split again in uh, patients within each group who uh, have hallucination and who, um, who, not, who not reported any hallucination uh, process. And um, so here you have uh, um, 12 patients of the Charlesbonne syndrome who reported hallucination, and uh, seven Parkinson's disease uh, who reported hallucination. So this was uh, the uh, data set. 
And uh, going to the results here, you have uh, um, reported the, um, the key values of the statistics uh, of comparing uh, the grade matter uh, between uh, uh, patients, uh, so uh, hallucination with um, non-hallucination, mixing up the two groups. Uh, two groups, and as you can see here, there are more uh, in the eight and seven lobus of the cerebellum, and uh, in, the in um, also in the cruised one. And uh, here we have a more extended part on the right uh, side. And uh, if you then split to the uh, Parkinsonian and uh, Charles Bonnet, uh, the difference was here in the cruised one, where we have. Uh, uh, so we have like we have um, um, less grade matter um, in uh, in patients and in particular more in uh, in the Parkinsonian disease. And um, then if you then look to the analysis um, focusing on the white matter, uh, we uh, they found um, a significant difference to a loss of white matter in uh, the medulla. And uh, again, uh, this was driven by the Parkinsonian disease uh, group. And uh, then they also compared um, if there was the correlations of uh, regions uh, uh, reported uh, gray matter um, atrophy and uh, also white matter volume loss. And they found uh, uh, really good correlations. Uh, is, is, here is reported in the eight uh, lobal uh, hemisphere cluster in the left cerebellum. Here you can uh, you can see patients, uh, so PD uh, uh, without a uh, with hallucination and uh, uh, Bonnet syndrome and or only um, the uh, eyes impairment. Uh, disease and uh, um, in particular they say that when you have hallucination you are in this uh, part of the um, uh, scatter plot and so uh, you have both uh, there is an agreement of gray matter loss and white matter loss instead uh, you you have this agreement also uh, when you are you are not uh, um, uh, presented hallucination, but uh, uh, is driven here. Uh, so there is this consistent when uh, you uh, you have hallucinations. So, and here, as uh, I was saying, is more uh, in the Parkinson uh, disease uh, group here in the Menvulla. And um, they yes, they discuss the results, uh, um, reporting uh, the uh, study presenting the literature uh, in the literature. Um, about uh, these hypotheses uh, on these dysfunctional uh, at, uh, attention network correlations with uh, uh, the visual uh, um, processing. And actually, uh, there are studies uh, um, supporting these uh, hypotheses. And also, in, it seems that also the CRUS one can be also um, related to these. Uh, uh, attention to, mot to motion uh, paradigm, and uh, so um, this is maybe the reason why it was more present in the Parkinson group, um, supporting these uh, different uh, uh, mechanism uh, that had driven hallucination in in the two patients group. And um, yes, there is also this hypothesis, but it's like um, explorative about uh, a possible uh, background in the serotonin system uh, that can be related to the infratensorial uh, um, uh, grade matter and white matter loss. And uh, they again reported this study. Uh, of on schizophrenia, where they found a similar um, distribution, uh, I think, in the eight uh, cerebellum lobes, um, when there was like gray matter lobes, uh, yes, in the seven and eight uh, um, cerebellum lobes. And um, so uh, they will say that um, it seems that the cerebellum is like uh, um, has a role in this process and also in the different pathologies. 
and also they are curious uh, uh, about the uh, Charles-Bonnet syndrome, uh, what will happen if we investigate the uh, cerebellum, for example, in another condition, so with a loss after a stroke or uh, cerebrovascular, cerebrovascular diseases. And of course, the limitation of these studies are the sizable group. It was a retrospective study. And um, it will be like nice to see uh, in a longitudinal perspective the relationship between these the gray matter loss and white matter loss. They seems to be consistent. And uh, this study was in one, uh, 1 1.5 Tesla. Uh, this in schizophrenia was uh, three Tesla, I think. So uh, maybe uh, a good, a better uh, signal statistic, but. Uh, is uh, again like um, a, a confirmation that uh, the cerebellum can have uh, a role in this uh, hallucination process. And uh, also it's really nicely written. I will recommend you this paper. It was uh, really nice to read it. And um, uh, yes, this was the paper. If you have any question, uh, I, I try to answer. Thank you, Leah. <clears throat> any questions? I do. Okay, go for it. Can I? Yeah. So it's so interesting. Uh, and I have so many questions actually, but <laughs> I limit myself just to two questions. Um, so the paper shows the um, anatomical difference uh, within the cerebellum between Parkinson's disease uh, and uh, Charlie Bonnet syndrome patients. And I was wondering, um, <laughs> Is this different related to some uh, uh, symptoms manifestation difference? Um, how, which is the clinical, like the differences in, in uh, the hallucination pattern, for instance, between uh, uh, Parkinson's disease and um, Charbonnet syndrome patients? Why they, did they um, choose these two patients group? Okay, so actually uh, there were uh, differences like in the cruise one uh, and more driven in the medulla atrophy, but there was also like a wide overlap between the gray matter loss. So like here in this, um, in this figure, uh, you, you can see like the two conditions and actually it's really similar uh, uh, where uh, they have like gray matter loss. In particular here in this, uh, uh, ventral part uh, of the cerebellum. So actually, they are consistent. So they are when uh, um, when they show these results, they are putting together Parkinson's disease and Charles Bonnet, who uh, has, um, who didn't present hallucination uh, versus uh, the hallucination the hallucinations one. So uh, there are differences, but here they are more focused uh, on the similarity. Indeed, uh, they choose these. Uh, uh, two different uh, uh, groups because uh, there are like um, I can say solid uh, different hypotheses uh, about uh, uh, the process behind what driven hallucinations and um, and um, so um, but if they find this uh, the same involvement in the cerebellum that can uh, mean that uh, there is a common process there, but also some differences, for example, in the cruise one, they can be more related on the dorsal uh, um, attention network. And uh, they try to see if there was a correlation with the Parkinsonian uh, index, but there was not here. And uh, they didn't, uh, they haven't, uh, they didn't have a scale uh, for um, somehow quantify hallucinations uh, and uh, because it was um, this was a retrospective study again so maybe um, uh, I don't know in psychology maybe you know better than me if there are some scales that can quantify in like in a uniform way um, hallucination content here mm -hmm. they just report everything and say that they know that there are differences so uh, Charles Bonnet syndromes can have more uh, um, simple um, hallucinations uh, against uh, uh, like the shape in the background periphery for the Parkinsonians, but here they reported like uh, what they have they have in common to so mm. the complex one. Okay. Um, and I have another question because I know you met uh, Charles Bonnet patients, right? 
uh, <laughs> Japanese symptom uh, syndrome patient. And I was wondering, as I, I know that uh, some Parkinsonian uh, patients have problems with their, with their awareness of their uh, symptoms. And I was wondering whether Charbonnet uh, syndrome patients are aware of the, of the hallucinations. Like, I think do they, they think are. I think I think I think they are, but um, I don't I don't have like a clinical experience for these. I just um, uh, have an experience of one patient, and I think he was aware because, uh, uh, for example, when you are uh, taking a, a part of a study, uh, they trigger your hallucinations. So and you have it, and then you reported that, okay. and it was in the investigation here. They uh, report the context of uh, the hallucination, so you are actually aware uh, because they are so frequent. I think uh, that mm -hmm. then you understand that they are not uh, reality. But uh, I don't really, I, 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 I don't have a clinical experience for that. I, I'm just reading these papers, and um, yeah, I was thinking that there is also an answer of what Stephanie was asking me last week, and here they say that also. Uh, um, on the 10 and, and 15 percent of the general population, you have these uh, hallucinations that are not um, identifiable, identifiable, like uh, so related to one specific cause. Um, there was uh, a question for last week. So uh, I think they are, for the answer, I think they are aware of these, uh, but uh, and also like in the schizophrenia paper, I briefly read the um, the abstract they say they they, they are well, drug resistant so actually you try to treat this condition that can be uh, a problem for patients uh, so you are aware if you are trying and investigating and reporting these uh, and maybe i don't know maybe in an early stage uh, where uh, clinicians have to ask uh, more so maybe to classify uh, the, these patients, they, if they are not aware, so maybe you try to ask or do some tests. I don't know if there are some tests of, for hallucination. There are, are they? You are, I, I mean, there are some standards question on uh, awareness for patients, but maybe you can like play around with the uh, uh, with the questionnaires and and see whether they are aware. But I, I have no experience with uh, schizophrenia patients, so I I'm not sure. Yes, I, I think that you are aware of this process if they are so common. So maybe you can, maybe mm -hmm. if they are like sporadic uh, manifestation, maybe you say, I don't know, I was like uh, <laughs> dreaming, I don't know. But yeah. it's like an hypothesis. Um, I, I don't have a clinical experience for this. Thank you. You're welcome. Michelle? Um, yeah, so like, uh, Dominic Fitch has this theory of like hyperconnectivity being mm. linked with visual hallucination. How does it reconcile what's going on in the cerebellum with this hyperconnectivity theory? I know he's a very he's an excellent writer, so I imagine there might be somewhere in, in the discussion. Did you see it or did it didn't mention? Actually, it was more related uh, the discussion of the attention um, network uh, because uh, they were focusing in the, to explain these differences between the, the two conditions, the Parkinsonian one and the Charles Bonnet. In the cerebellum, it seems that uh, it, the cerebellum seems to be involved in a lot of things and not only motor processing. Mm -hmm. So also. Uh, they said again was in the discussion about language, emotion, perception. So maybe also in this um, um, in the, in the um, visual part. Ah, they say at some point that in the cerebellum, uh, the dorsolateral is more related to spatial uh, to, to spatial task, and, and and the ventrolateral uh, is more. Uh, uh, visual and vis and um, working memory task. They focus on this uh, involvement of vision and working memory. So uh, and then the connection with the attention network, but also in the uh, dysfunctional uh, integration with the cortex. So um, they yes, they really focused on the attention network and these uh, different parts of the cerebellum related to um, to the visual part. So here about the 
uh, attention network. Here, the cruise plan again for attention. Here, ah, yeah, I was I uh, was saying uh, the uh, dorsal medial is more in the special aspect of task uh, in the ventrolateral where they found the significant differences in the in the visual working memory. The serotonin system was more, um, so maybe this was the thought, this, this, this uh, integration with the serotonin system that uh, can be uh, related to uh, gray matter, gray matter loss in the cerebellum. So maybe this can uh, uh, have a link with uh, both. So PD and eye disease, maybe this could be like something that is behind the both conditions, but they say that is like an exploratory uh, hypothesis. So they, um, it's not like really directly connected. And here is another condition. So maybe the answer it was here in the serotonin system, but uh, is really like uh, at an uh, initial stage. Mm -mm. Yes, and they also talk about the caudal rafe nuclei and but um and this integration, but um I really did um it seems like really an explorative uh, hypothesis um, and then the correlation um so maybe it was here well where where are they trying to answer uh, the question um, you were asking so yeah <sighs> But um, I really, um, yeah, I read that, but um, I, I'm not, I, I don't know about the, I don't really know about the sorting system. And uh, they also like uh, said that there is also sometimes uh, uh, so a genetic correlation that you can have with these uh, findings that can be related to psychosis. And they try to link these correlations also with the cerebellum that is just a functional link. And um, in this maybe caudal rafe nuclei, um, in like like a role of this in this system, but um, I think it's ref it's difficult to test it. They were like um, a little bit caution in uh, in explaining that. Michelle, you didn't sound convinced just there. <laughs> I... What are you thinking? Um, I need to read the discussion to reconcile everything. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, go for it. Yeah, uh, I have a uh, slight naive question. Uh, yeah, uh, I was wondering, uh, uh, there is a mention about uh, attentional uh, dysfunction with visual areas and other areas in the brain. Uh, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, a, what appears that the individual should be attending to the uh, to the hallucination certainly so that they can recall it at the later point of time and uh, uh, is it uh, a die function really or is it uh, some other uh, uh, fault which is uh, in the brain uh, in the processing uh, because uh, what I really think that uh, it, without attending to the stimuli or without attending to your what is uh, what you're seeing, you won't be able to report it or register. Uh, it's something like uh, uh, a dreaming, uh, and uh, uh, I, I see colors, pictures, and I'm flying, but uh, I won't be able to. If I'm not attending, I wouldn't be able to register. Uh, that's one point, and also I just wanted to ask if do do we uh, did we have ever tested the uh, patients uh, with schizophrenia or with Parkinson's at the uh, in the lab where we check for the brain states uh, they are in uh, when they hallucinate or for us, uh, something like that. So checking for this brain states when uh, they are hallucinating. Do we have any studies like that? Okay, so um, for the first question, so you were saying that maybe if they have like a loss in attention, they will not be uh, um, aware of uh, these manifestations of the, the hallucination process, yeah. this was the question. Yeah. So for answer to that, they did the minimental state 
to see um, so they were just reported this and say that they were not uh, like uh, i think different so they were like study the minimental state for that as maybe seems lower for the shots for me they um, so they have a measure of, maybe because it was a retrospective study so they um have not a measure for the attention as you said that there was maybe a test but uh, it was i think it, it is really interesting maybe the there are other studies, maybe prospective studies that investigate that. Here, they just commend the many mental score to uh, see if they were like um, uh, able to report uh, these hallucinations or they were not maybe aware uh, given by a uh, mini mental state. Uh, and uh, for the uh, second question, it was uh, if comparing the PD uh, versus the Chasmonet, no, uh, what is it uh, asking? Yeah, uh, it was uh, like... Schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenia. Uh, yeah. um, I don't know actually if uh, there are studies uh, that compare in these two groups, because uh, for what I was reading in the, in the discussion, uh, in the different study, of course, you focus uh, on a disease. Indeed, here in this paper, it was interesting because they're trying to mix uh, different uh, uh, pathology and to see if there were like uh, differences or not. And um, uh, again, um, like uh, for um, in sometimes maybe you try to trigger um, hallucination, like for example, with the task, you can use like. Uh, uh, a bell for auditory um, stimulation or uh, like the um, test K, how you call the board, where you have like a lot of visual input that they are changing color that can trigger hallucinations. So uh, in um, in the content in the content of a task, uh, fMRI maybe uh, you uh, study so hallucination in the scanner, but you need to trigger these hallucinations with this uh, um, visual or auditory input. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was just wondering whether we do, do know it, what, at what state the brain is, like uh, what, uh, is it uh, 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 gamma, uh, ga at, the, at the gamma state or alpha state, uh, ah, yeah? So because, okay. uh, yeah, uh, because uh, a, uh, it, 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 we could compare it with uh, a, a, a situation where uh, it, we know that at, at certain states the, the brain is more a, a, more uh, a, a attentional based and can uh, attend to the stimuli and at some other states uh, uh, we are not uh, uh, for example during this uh, dream dreaming state mm -hmm. or uh, when we are uh, going to uh, yeah. Uh, so, do we have any data which says uh, what state the brain is at, at the functional level and uh, 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 how it is interacting? Mm, I actually, I, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't read the study about that, but I think it's, that it's something that is feasible. Also, if you have, you're using like an AG. Uh, uh, monitoring of patients. Um, I know about epilepsy, but maybe you can apply that also in the Parkinsonian disease, or even better, if you use, uh, uh, there are integrated uh, AG and fMRI system that you can use uh, uh, at the same time in the scanner, so you can trigger hallucination and measure both the fMRI and the AG. Of course, you have a lot of noise for the gel cap and everything, but you can uh, uh, there are um, there are some new instruments, new tools for doing that. So I haven't I I have to look to start if there were studies about that. They were not reporting the discussion about the AG, but it's something that is feasible. I think that uh, if people want to investigate this process, we have the instruments for doing that. Also to uh, see what uh, you were saying that is interesting if there is like a change. Uh, in the state, um, yeah, yeah we, really we really, we, we really go to a different state at that moment when you are uh, hallucinating, and also it will help us to rule out whether the uh, attentional hypothesis, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if we are uh, instead of asking them question later on whether you can remember, we know that uh, patients tend 
uh, uh, you cannot rely on the memory aspect whether they really was at uh, were attending at that moment or uh, it is just a failure of memory at that after point of time isn't it yeah now i said that it's really interesting also in comparing these patients how they uh, maybe the g recording is during sleep uh, if there are some yeah, similarities yeah. Uh, like because they also don't like some patients uh, i know like um uh, what's the name of that symptom in uh, narcolepsy that you have these uh, uh, dreams that seem so real so it's like an hallucination in the dream yeah. uh, they have these prisons they really woke up because they think that there was uh, the dream was real and uh, so it's really interesting yeah yeah thank you welcome lovely discussion are there any more questions No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much uh, for bringing those two papers this week. And I wish you an exciting week in science and hopefully see you next Monday morning again. Have a good week. Bye. Bye-bye.